Hello, today I'm going to share with you how to get started with learning Ally. Um, some of you at Lawrence School may have heard me talk about it and share information about the great reading games that I started yesterday. But I wanted to share with you some basic steps on how to get started with learning Ally, whether you're on a Chromebook, whether you're on a computer, a Mac, or even a mobile app like an iPad or your smartphone. Learning Ally is great um, because it could be accessed a lot of different ways. Uh, your username is going to be your school email address and password. If you're not sure what it should be, just you can email me, Ms. Garza, or ask Mr. Sepsi at the lower school, and we'll be glad to help you. So let's get started. So I'm going to pretend I'm a student called Larry Lyon. He, um, he's a student here at Lawrence School. Larry Lyon is... Um, and I'm going to show you that, and the good thing is, it doesn't matter if you're using an iPad, a Chromebook, or a computer or Mac. Um, the app you might use might be a little different, or accessing it, but once you get it open, it's going to work exactly the same way. Okay? So, if you're on a Chromebook, what you're going to do is you're going to go to where it says student bookmarks up on your bookmark bar in Google Chrome. And you will see uh, one of the bottom tools right here is our links right here is going to be Learning Ally Chrome app. Uh, and lower school has this as part of their bookmarks as well. What you're going to do is going to take you to a website that looks like this. If you already have installed Learning Ally, it'll say launch app. If you have not installed Learning Ally, it'll say Install App. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and install it, and then you have, might have to click Install again. Once you do that, when you launch it, it's going to open a little app that looks like this. Now, if you have a Windows or Mac computer, you would have to go down to um, your program list, and you will see like in my L's here, I see Learning Ally, and there's the Learning Ally audiobook I'm going to use instead. If I'm using a Chromebook, though, I want to just click OK here, and it's going to ask me to sign in. <clears throat> um, your username, again, is your school email. And remember to put at laurenschool.org. Uh, and then your password is your school, whatever your school password is. So I'm going to sign in Larry Lyons' password, and it's going to take me to something that looks like, um, that says My Books. And this is called the, called the Bookshelf. Okay, and you can see uh, Larry Lyon has a lot of stuff on the bookshelf because he, he's used in a lot of different classes. It'll say your name up here in the corner. And notice there's this little guy up here. So the little guy, you can do things like add books, you can manage books, you could update books. Um, and you could also switch users this way. So I'm going to hide them again. So the first thing I have to do is add a book. So if uh, to add a book, you'll see at the bottom of your bookshelf, it'll say add books. Or you could click on the little guy in the corner and say add books. Either way, it'll do the same thing. It'll open a website uh, on a new tab for the uh, Learning Ally, and it's already logged you in as you. If you see the cookie message down at the bottom, these are computer cookies, not real cookies. Uh, you're just going to say got it, and it won't show you that again. But it will show you uh, basically um, um, this is a collection of all the books that are in Learning Ally, because Learning Ally is a collection of human read audiobooks. So you could scroll down, and these are kind of like highly recommended books, especially if it says good read on it. Um, you also can look by, you could sort by, like you could search by a specific name of an author. Like if I'm looking for Judy Bloom, I could type in Bloom, and it will give me kind of anything with the word Bloom in it, whether it's in the title or the author's name. So let's say um, I'm looking at all these books, and notice over here on the side, it'll get, tell me what format the book is in. There's two options. One is classic audio. You can see right here. Classic audio means you're going to hear the book being read to you, but you're not going to see any of the words. But if you want, you can follow along in a real book if you want. But otherwise, you're just listening. 
any of these that say voice text as the format, voice text, voice text is meaning you're hearing the words being read aloud, but you're also seeing the words and it will highlight as it's reading. This is actually the preferred method and recommended method, the format for most Lauren School students uh, who, need, who need audio support. So once you find a book that you want to download, so I'm gonna download Double Fudge and add it to my bookshelf. So I'm gonna click add to bookshelf and that will add it to kind of my the app on my list here. Now, if you want to know more about a book, you could actually click on the title of the book and it will give you a short summary of the book over here. It will also show you down here under book information, other information about the book, like when was it a copyright, the year it was produced, how many pages are in the book, what grade levels or age levels or Lexile levels. Uh, these are usually the three things that help me determine if this is a good the right age for me uh, when I'm reading a book. Um, some books might not have all of three of these fields, but some will, they, most of the books will have at least one of these fields, either grade, age, or Lexile level, okay? And if you're not sure, ask a teacher and they could help you, okay? It'll also tell you what kind of subject, so this is juvenile fiction. Fiction means it's made up. Nonfiction means it's real, a uh, true story. Okay, <clears throat> if you like that book, again, you could add it to the bookshelf here. Once you add it to your bookshelf, you can go back to the app itself, which is down here. And I'm gonna say, go back to the little guy in the corner and say, update my books. Once you do that, you should see, um, so that was double trouble, I think. So it should be in the D section there, the double fudge, there it is. And now it's, that it's on my bookshelf, and that is true for any of these books, I can download it so I, to my device so I could read it. So for any of these books, all I would hit click is the download button. You'll see the little guy going around downloading it to my device. You only have to do that one time, uh, and that's really the only time you're really using internet, is when you're downloading it and updating your bookshelf. You just click on the play button to start listening to the book. Double fetch. Good morning, sir. When my brother Fudge was five, he discovered money in a big way. Hey, Pete, he said one night as I was getting out of the shower, how much would it cost to buy New York? The city or the state? Okay, so I paused it right there, but notice it was highlighting as it, as it was reading to me. The voice cannot be changed because that was recorded by an actual person. However, you could make some changes uh, to the voice itself. If you see down here <coughs> in the uh, program, there's a little gear down here in the app. And in the app, you could choose the playback volume, the speed. So you could slow it down or speed it up. Um, and you could choose, uh, yeah, I wouldn't change anything else there. Just those first two. You could also choose the text. And you could make the font bigger if you want. You can make the font more, uh, the words more spread out from each other. You could also choose how much space between the lines, as well as how much space is taken up on the actual page. You could also choose what color you want the words to be. Uh, that matters to some people. For some people, maybe not. You could also choose the background color. So if you choose black, you could choose white letters to make it a little easier on yourself to read. Uh, you could also use the change the highlighter color if you want. Okay. And then if you, you want to go back to normal, you just return to default settings. So now if I read this. Good morning, Good morning sir. When my brother Fudge was five. Uh, you could also no notice up here in the top right corner, there is a little um, bookmark tool. So when I bookmark, it'll remember my page that I left off at, and it will also allow me to add notes. You could add notes or questions when you're reading and just hit save. Money in a big way. And notice hey, he, when you do that. As I was getting out of the shower, how much would it it kind of puts these dotted underlines. That means you have a note there. You could also go to the bottom 
left hand corner of the screen and you see the little thing here you can go to a specific chapter a specific page you could also go to specific notes bookmarks or vocabulary words that you looked up okay so uh it will do take me right here if i open that up and bring up my question or notes again uh, notice down here at the bottom, it will show you what page number you're on, and it will show you how, how much you've read and how much you still have to read. So this book will take four hours, about four hours and 12 minutes total, and I've read two minutes and 20 seconds of that. I could go back uh, um, to the main menu on my main bookshelf, and when I come back to it, it'll remember where I left off. He's sitting on the open toilet seat in his pajamas. Okay. And it will take me back to that same spot as long as I'm on the same device. Now, if I start on my Chromebook and I switch to my iPad and then come back to my Chromebook, it's not going to remember what page I left off on the different devices. It'll only remember on that device where I left off. Okay. Otherwise, it will keep track of how, what, what, how many pages you've read on each book. And teachers, if uh, teachers could go into your account and actually see how many pages in each book you've actually listened to. Uh, so there's no denying. <laughs> you could also click up here and hit update at any time to update how many page numbers you read if you want that to be, be especially accurate with the uh, great reading games contest. That's always important to do once in a while, just to let your teachers know how many pages you really read. Okay. If you have any questions about learning ally, please, please, please uh, reach out to me, Ms. Garza, Mr. Sepsi at the lower school or Ms. Lofersky, who goes between the lower school and upper school. I uh, will be glad to help you use Learning Ally some more.